Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We continue with Liz Kerman's mission to Minmus and we will see what happens. So far we haven't killed Liz yet, but uh, well it's still early on in the mission. We have had our docking. We have of course failed on the moon option because we didn't have enough Delta V. There's no way 1655 meters per second is good enough to land on the moon and get back into orbit, uh, especially since we have to get into orbit first. So we are headed to Minmus and hoping that that will be more possible. And this doesn't have enough comms to communicate back, but that's not a problem. We don't have to even rendezvous with the Agena-ish stage anymore. Uh, maybe we should... We don't have EVA capability, but a crew report right now might be useful high over Kerbin, right? Um, I've got two megabytes of storage, but uh, we can't really transmit back right now. So we might want to not do too many crew reports, actually. Now that one for a high over will be alright. But we absolutely need to get the one at the surface, because that is required for our contract. Transmit and recover scientific data from the surface. So I'll pro probably hold off on any crew reports from orbit of Minmus for now, just to make sure we get the surface one. Well, there's Minmus. Our pass happens to have allowed us some sunlight still. And capturing into orbit. We'll be la looking to land on the daylit side, of course. I'm looking at this crater. Or flat. We've got sort of a trajectory so that we can land. Uh, should I get the EVA possibility? Does Liz have an EVA pack? I suppose Liz must come with an EVA pack, right? Or do we not? Um... Yeah, I, I think uh, even though Liz couldn't EVA, Liz has an EVA pack with apparently 5 mod propellant. So the EVA packs use mod propellant. Apparently. Um, right now, as far as funds are concerned, we've got 700,000. Alright, let's, uh, let's unlock the, the astronaut complex, allow EVAs, and have... Liz EVA while we are here. I don't know if the EVA report, wow it's dark, uh, takes up hard drive space or not. Okay, upgrade. Alright, we have spent that money. I mean, realistically it probably shouldn't apply to a mission that we've already launched, but it probably does. Well this crater isn't too bad, right here. Let's just land here. Our solar panel is actually face downward anyway, so we're not going to get much out of it as far as power is concerned. One flaw, this wasn't really well designed as a lander. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's turning quite quickly, as Minmus does. Alright, we're over the crater, so... Landing anywhere here will be fine. Well, we have to avoid boulders, but then again, Mimesis gravity is so weak, so probably not a huge problem. Interesting white spot right there. I don't know if that's something or not. Okay, here we go. On the bright side, this is Minmus, so tipping over isn't too much of a trouble. Okay, uh, up. Oh, uh, Okay. All right, we are on the ground. Let's get a crew report for sure. And it's running. Uh, well, I hope there's enough data and power. Okay, we appear to have our crew. Ooh, it bounced. It bounced. But uh, we have our crew report. We still have electric charge. 
EVA. Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh no! 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 <laughs> oh! Oh! Uh. Uh. Okay. Don't inspect anything. But wow. EVA report. Forty-five seconds. Thirty units, though. I, I'm not getting yeah, letting her get off. This is dodgy. So Liz has her own data capacity, I guess. Looks like it doesn't take much data to begin with. Okay, well, we don't need to keep that running. And surface sample, well, it takes a minute. And I guess that's just a separate slot. It says one slot now. So we can still do the surface sample from being attached to the pod. That's good. <laughs> it's safer that way, it's fine. Let's not talk about it. Okay, we seem to have our surface sample. Board? Okay, well, we've transferred the data. Hopefully we have everything. I think we've got science. We just have to recover it. Okay, we've done our first landing. Let's get Liz back. So, Minmus surface basins. Oh, they might have made it so that the flats are all basins, and so we can't just go from one flat to another. Maybe, maybe that's a thing to keep us from science spamming Minmus. I don't know. But we seem to have a lot of stuff. We even got the other crew reports, I didn't notice. I kept it running. I didn't mean to keep it running, but we had enough space for the crew report, space low, space high. Um, we could do the EVA reports, but let's just not <laughs> for now. We'll send another mission to get the further EVA reports. I want to take what we've got here. We have 671 meters per second left to get home. Which should be enough, but, you know. This is nerve-wracking. Okay, completing orbit. I mean, we've already had an instance where the Delta V reading wasn't quite right, so... You never know, but it seems to be okay right now. Okay, 281 seems like it, and we get back in 3 days and 9 hours, which is quickly enough. Okay, and go. Uh, a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more. I'll take 27 kilometers, I think. Alright, so we are on the way back. We seem to be recharging at the moment. Let us exit Minmus SOI. Since I'm not doing DV reports, I don't need to do that. Are we blocked? Okay, we're blocked by Minmus as far as power is concerned for the time being. Okay, we are now recharging. We are back in Kerbin space. Here comes Kerbin. Crossing the radiation belts again. Liz had a total of 28% stress, but I mean, you know, we were out for about half the time that Jeb was. And for some reason, the measure in the VAB for how long they can take such things is not exactly right, but 9% radiation. So I don't know about sending a Kerbal out to Duna in this sort of thing. But then, it, yeah, well, I mean, we only had 3% on the first pass through the radiation belts. So it's a matter of how much do we get while in the non-radiation belt space. 
Okie dokie. We are getting rid of our module. We still have our heat shield. And the soul panels can't retract still, so... Yep, they're gonna blow up. For the time when they don't blow up, they should provide some extra drag for us. Okay. Stuff is still overheating. Oh. That was quick. The solar panels are gone. Uh, the heat shield has uh, overheating indicator. Oh god. The pod also has an overheating indicator. No! No! The Hermes can't come back from Minmus, apparently. I mean, they had the or Hermes heat shield. We were so close. Many things exploded. We need something that can deal with 2,400 to 2,700 Kelvin. Apparently. The heat shields are useless. I swear. They're just completely useless. What is up with these heat shields? Mm. Well, back to Space Center. It was almost... Almost looking good. We should have been able to transmit something before it all blew up, right? <laughs> we had some communication time. I don't know if we got the contract done or not. No. The science data from space around... Uh, from the surface of Minmus contract is still here. So apparently we did not transmit that science. Which is interesting. I guess maybe the bit rate was too low or something like that. I don't know. Because we had the crew report science. Should have been able to transmit that. But I don't know. Well, I did pick a Kerbal who was... Who I was not emotionally attached to, apparently. Uh, do we have any pods that can handle this, then? So, the Hermes pod has 1,400 internal 2,400 skin. The Vinci pod has 1,400 internal 2,400 skin, so it's doomed too. The command Mark 1 command pod is worse. Um, this onion is the same. So apparently, these are definitely not suited for return from the moons. This Augustus automated resupply pod has 2,000 internal 2,000 skin, but that doesn't seem enough either. Maybe the internal would be good though. But that's not a crew capsule. That's just a cargo capsule. This Mark II command pod has 2,200 2,200. Skin-wise, it's not great. This Salamander command pod has 2,400, 2,400. This is from USI. It's sort of flat, flying saucer-like, but, you know, they can be reclined in there. That's fine. Wow, we have all the USI stuff in advanced construction here. We have all sorts of surface modules that we can deploy there. Do I not have community tech tree in here? Oh, let me double check. Oh, okay, I don't have community tech tree in here. Okay, so first, I'm going to put community tech tree in here and see what happens. Because that might change things as far as where stuff is, like the salamander and stuff. So let me get that, and we are going to see where community tech tree puts all this stuff. Because it's probably not all in the right place right now. Okay, now that I've added community tech tree, we've got a much more expansive tech tree. And not all the modules are in advanced construction for USI. So we have a few things. We've got this tundra, these tundra things, and some processing units. But uh, mostly it's elsewhere down here. Nanoleathing. We've got some stuff in nanoleathing. But uh, yeah, so it's distributed a little bit better. 
and hopefully our parts that we have been using have not been sent to inconvenient locations. Uh, uh, I think we're mostly all right though. Uh, so I think it was mostly BDB, not USI stuff. So that BDB stuff should still be in the regular locations. Though like Kerbal Atomics or uh, near future stuff definitely probably required the expansion provided by Community Tech Tree. Now, as far as our Salamander pod, I was still looking at that, and it is still in simple command modules, so that is our best hope, as far as I can tell, unless people tell me different, for a pod that can bring us back from the moon or Minmus. And we also have this Leo 1.875 meter heat shield that takes 3,300 Kelvin. So that's pretty good. And I don't know if there's a better heat shield under enhanced survivability. I don't think so. This heat shield is also 3,300. The Hermes heat shield, let's see, our culprit. That's the decoupler. And yeah, well, the Hermes, uh, no, that's still Leo. That's still 3,300. Where is the Hermes heat shield? Well, it also is 3,300. So I don't know whether there's any any benefit to the bigger heat shields at all. Uh, it's looking interesting. I don't know if there's some sort of heating modification I need for JNSQ, but we'll move on for now on the assumption that we need to do other things to unlock better technologies. At least the Salamander pod looks like it might be able to keep the crew safe. Certainly the Hermes uh, did not, but I should point out that the Hermes skin max temp is 2400. So it's not like the Salamander has better skin max temp, it's just the, its internal temp is better. I don't know if that's the important thing or not, we will see. Well, well, well we should test that out uncrewed, as it turns out. Okay, so what I think I will tackle at this point is the two contracts that we got from BDB, which were very interesting and lucrative. The perform a little breaking maneuver on the moon, and that required an ionization and electrostatic analysis and a charged particle data experiment. And those had to be done low in space over the moon. And then we have to crash it into the moon. So that's a bit complicated. And also I wanted to tackle the other one, which is a Wayfarer probe as opposed to a Burke probe. And this one needs to uh, fly by the moon at below 200 kilometers, but be on escape and have the micrometeoroid impact data, microwave spectrometry data, magnetometer scan, and transmit all of them uh, from space in lunar, a uh, lunar space. So it's complicated and I want to do both of them at the same time because, uh, well, uh, if we can, we can, let's see. Now, just as a side note, it turns out that our introduction of community tech tree has uh, caused a bit of a problem you'll see that the Hermes 2 contains locked or invalid parts here. So does Gamma 3. Let's see. Gamma 3 has this derp ring extension that we don't have anymore because that was part of USI. So that was a decouple... Uh, no, it was a structural part that we were using. Uh, and then uh, this Hermes 2 is missing the Gemini docking port, which is sort of a surprise. Sort of a surprise because we have the other part, right? We have the Bell target docking port, we just don't have the other part of it. So why in the tech tree we have half of the system and not the other half, I don't know. But apparently we don't have the other half. <laughs> so we have a, a docking target, we don't have the docking port that goes with it. I don't understand this logic, but whatever. Anyway, we don't have the rendezvous contract right now anyway, but it does mean that we can't just duplicate our previous uh, attempt to land on the moon. So, not that we would want to. But anyway, here is the combined Burke Wayfarer probe that I've decided to put together. And we have to keep it under 30 parts. That's one reason why we don't have boosters and I've had to make some changes here. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. Uh, so in the contracts they said that to find the right parts we should type in ranger or mariner ranger for the burke probe and mariner would be for the wayfarer probe actually the wayfarer stuff 
uh, pops up here too anyway. So we have this Burke probe, and I assume it's this rough landing probe. Uh, now it's designed to be attached to the Stara 10 Ethra solid motor, but we don't have that. So I can't do that. And this decoupler doesn't even fit it properly for some reason. I'm missing something probably because of the Stara thing. I know what the Stara 10 probably is, uh, but we don't have it, and I don't know why. Uh, but I have gone with these Burke communication dishes, which have a good max speed uh, and certainly good range. They consume a bit of power there, but we have not only the RTGs, but while the Wayfarer portion, which we have here and will be coupled, while the Wayfarer portion is here, we also have these folder folding solar panels. So we've got that as a backup. But once the Wayfarer goes off, we're just going to have the RTGs. So, it's complicated, but we'll have good bandwidth initially. The Wayfarer will try to transmit all of its data while still attached to it, so we have maximum bandwidth and maximum data capacity. Uh, but we also have this high gain antenna uh, on it, so just in case. And it has all the data capacity. Now, the experiments that we were supposed to have it, uh, I've got it written down as well because otherwise I wouldn't be able to keep track of these things. But uh, lift or break, ionization and electrostatic analysis. So this one says ionization and electrostatic analysis boom. It is from the Blue, uh, Blue Dog Design Bureau. And then the other one is charged particle data. And this ion trap boom, if we take a look has charged particle data. So I'm pointing this out because I'm very worried that I'm not going to have the right things because it's like a hundred things that have the same sort of data. Taking a look at this ionization electric electrostatic analysis part, it only has to collect data. Now this one has charged particle data, right? And it looks like this is Kerbalism configured properly, yeah? This one does not look like it's Kerbalism configured properly, okay? And uh, we have like a hundred things that have a magnetometer on it, and that's for the Wayfarer probe. Wayfarer probe, uh, we have uh, this folding magnetometer boom, which is one type of magnetometer. We've got a lot of other types of magnetometer that could work. The problematic one here is the microwave spectrometry. So aim at the moon and miss. We've got microwave spectrometry data. And which one actually gives microwave spectrometry data? is complicated. This here is what we have. It says microwave spectrum and you notice that it isn't uh, Kerbalism style science instrument at least as far as this looks like. Uh, there was another one that said microwave but not spectrometry. There are in fact uh, experiment trusses that were for the Burke probe but they only had some things like this one has charged particle data but we don't need the magnetometer on the Burke part and that's for the Wayfarer so uh, it ultimately doesn't seem to be as efficient as just getting the instruments that we have the way we have them right now okay so there is this electrically scanning microwave radio something and it has collect microwave data but not microwave spectrometry data and of course the one that we have on it says microwave spectrum but not microwave spectrometry so and you know when you're coding stuff having the words wrong is important right because uh, then if it checks for the condition and it doesn't see that word it's not going to be happy so I don't know if we've got the right instruments here otherwise we've got the high gain antenna and then we also have the micrometeoroid impact data thing that we've had before and that one is the instrument that I'm most confident in. <laughs> so we, we should probably be able to do that but we have a lot of parts up here and so what's going to happen is this is going to help with the transfer out to the moon and making sure that we hit that 200 kilometers. Uh, then the Wayfarer will separate so that it continues out to interplanetary space presumably. Uh, the upper stage kit here will help the ranger capture into orbit so that it has the time to transmit all the data that it needs to because probably we can't just go smack into the moon's surface and expect it to transmit all the data. 
even though with Ranger, the actual Ranger mission just went straight in without capturing into orbit first. We will need to capture into orbit first. And so, yeah, it's going to do that. And then we'll... Uh, actually, this little Burk probe has a little engine at the bottom. Uh, well, not engine at the bottom. It's actually inside. It clips inside and it looks like... Uh, let me see... It's this uh, mid-course correction engine. It actually goes inside the Burke probe, and that will actually deorbit it in this case, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, we will use that to deorbit it. And even this rough landing probe uh, has a whole bunch of stuff, including a reaction wheel and also comms. In fact, enough comms to get uh, to get a signal back. The only reason we have the big antennae is because we don't have enough bandwidth otherwise. I think. So yeah. Lots of stuff going on with this, and on top of all that, we've replaced the original upper stage engine, the Decker, with a cryogenic one, the Isor, and this is obviously a sort of RL10ish thing. It says R10A, uh, and this is has the hydrogen oxygen, and this has the hydrogen oxygen. The reason for that is because otherwise we wouldn't have enough delta V without going over the part count. We'd need boosters. So, with all of that mess, and the fact that we don't have launch clamps and hope this will really balance on that tiny little engine, let's see what happens. It's really expensive. But, you know, they pay well. We're sparing no expense on this, really. Well, it's not wiggling yet. Um, the hydrogen's boiling off, so we better go. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition, and it'll launch whenever it's ready. Okay, through the clouds. Okay, separation and ignition. And we really want fairings at this point. Off go the fairings. Everything up there is RCS. This is, I think, the first launch we've had that has no liquid fuel. Just liquid hydrogen. I mean, of course, liquid hydrogen is the liquid fuel, but I mean, you know, I mean the actual resource liquid fuel. As far as some features of Kerbal Constructs might be working, like I think I activated uh, additional ground stations, and we seem to have a new station over here that I don't remember having for, and one there. We used to have a blackout sort of situation here without the satellites overhead, which of course uh, we have that one back there. Uh, yeah. And shut down. 95 by 85. And we're looking good so far. These uh, big communication dishes go all the way like that, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> Until we separate off. Actually, they're bad anyway, but. How am I supposed to pack them any better? Uh, maybe we could have tilted them more. Well, that's under 200 kilometers. We can get closer than that, but... And, uh... All right, that'll, that'll do the trick. I don't think we need to get any lower than that. So, yeah, we have enough with this stage. And we do have some boil off, but hopefully it won't hurt that. We did lose a lot of Delta V while time warping though, just a little while. I mean, more than 100 meters per second here. So we just have enough here. Although uh, I was always intending on using the little stage at the bottom of the Wayfarer to help out. Okay, and go. No real risk on the comms because we can let this stage run out if we need to. We can make a correction afterwards. But I think we've got pretty well covered here. We've got Gamma there, Gamma 3 there, the Decker, one of the, I guess, a spent portion over there. And okay, well, that's as good as we're gonna get there. Alright, well, we got everything we could have asked for from that stage. Mm, separation. Okay, we are free. I'll save that one as mentioned. Magnetometer scan though, we can start right away probably. It's poking out like that. <laughs> Everything has to poke out weirdly. Magnetometer scan is running, but it'd take three days. 
Now, and uh, no storage space now. Build up both bits. Build up all the bits. Um, okay, what is our data transmission rate? How are we ever going to get the science on the flyby of the moon if we can't transmit faster than this? I've put all the antennae I could with the best trans data transfer rates. We're transmitting at 3.43. Well, I'm going to extend these and see what they can give us in addition. That's 7.3 kilobytes per second. And they're clipping in, unfortunately. And now we've got an electric charge problem because we need too much, but we can just reorient to the sun, probably. Okay, now we're all nice and balanced. So as far as our approach to the moon is concerned, uh, we're a little bit high. Gonna lock the upper RCS fuel so we don't use it yet. All right, that's as good as we can get right now. So we're trying to transmit this science. Micrometeoroid says 10 days. Uh, micrometeoroid is doing is taking up most of the space. Let me just not. Let's focus on the magnetometer right now. Let's see if we can get it out there. Still says three days, five hours. Okay, taking a look at our contract situation, it says this is a new Burke probe and a new wafer probe, but I swear it said those things even when they weren't. So, we'll see. Let's just, let's just go over to the moon. We're, we're doing some science. I don't know if we'll get any of it done. Let's just go over to the moon and see what contracts we can fulfill. I'm gonna get rid of the micrometeoroid things. We're mostly interested in stuff in moon space anyway. I checked, the magnetometers all seem to do stuff at the same rate though. So there wasn't like a more powerful magnetometer or something. Well now, we have to do the science for the Burke probe at low altitude, but they didn't say that for the Wayfarer part, so we can still continue with the Wayfarer stuff. No storage space though, but we still have to do the moon space data. So we have to try and transmit it somehow, going at 7.3 kilobytes per second. Well, we'll see if we can do it. Uh, this is going to be shot out to interplanetary space as requested. So it is going on escape. It is what it is. Well, it has a check mark for magnetometer scan moon space high. I don't know if it has enough of it. I'm going to observe microwave spectrum here. Okay, let me try and transmit this data. I don't know. I actually checkmarked both micrometeoroid impact data and microwave spectrometry data. I don't know if it's going to transmit because it's not... Well, it says microwave spectrometry. Let me just pause all other transmission. Not enough space on hard drive. Okay, well, let me get some rid of some stuff. Stored partially. Okay, well... Let me try and get rid of more stuff. Okay, is 2 gigabytes good enough? Okay, it says it's recorded. Okay, we got some credits for that. And we've got the microwave spectrometry one done, which is actually the one I was most confused about, but it seems like that was the easiest. Can we just get the magnetometer scan done? Without running the... It still says three days though, and we just don't have that kind of time in moon space before we get ejected out. I mean, it just is straight running. It doesn't need to store it. We're transmitting faster than it can store the stuff. Well, I guess we'll do the micrometeoroid at the same time then. I mean, as far as our time in moon space, 12 hours. 
Okay, well, it is now decoupling time. The Wayfarer is going to Wayfair. And the Burke is going to capture into orbit. It's possible with all the fuel that we have in the Wayfarer, we might do something with it. Uh, no plan right now. So I'm going to unlock this now. And separation. Check that the Wayfarer has its own independent communication working. It does. And it is recharging as it faces the sun. And this is also a go. Let's put an extra stage just in case. We have activated its engine. Okay, so we are ready to capture with this. And uh, I'm going to start the charge particle and the, that thing, ionization and electrostatic analysis. And let's see, collect data. This is still high over. I don't want to collect data yet. Okay, capturing around the moon. Polar orbit, in fact. Checking comms, it should be fine because of this approach. That was a little bit too early. The periapsis is going down, down too fast. Okay. Moon space low. Um, we should just not have the moon space high because we needed the moon space low as a priority. I'm purging this micrometeoroid impact data. That's not relevant to this probe, really. Okay, collect data on the ionization stuff. Let's see if we can fit it. Yeah, it's 300, so we've got that. Okay, we've got the ionization one. Uh, it didn't read it, though. It didn't say recovery transmit. Well, apparently we needed some more. It still doesn't say that we've got all of it. It says we got point 0.1 left to do, which is weird. Okay, now it says we've got it all done. Okay, back to the charged particle. But we're going to have to hang out for a while to get this one done. It says two days. Could be worse, I suppose. Okay, getting into a tighter orbit. That should be fine. Okay, we are transmitting. It's going to take some time. I'm going to go to a tracking station. Uh, we're electrically balanced, so there's that. And that engine there has all its small propellant for deorbiting that thing. So we will see. All right, back to tracking station. Oh, I got a magnetometer scan back. I mean, the Wayfarer will at least give us some science back, wherever it happens to be now. Okay, we've, we've, got, we've got all the things. We need to destroy the vessel. I'm going to decouple it off of this, because that way we are going to be able to retain this as a communicate. Well, it's not a relay, though. Hmm, maybe we should just dispose of it. This can't actually relay anything, but it can keep doing science, though, potentially, but not a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be able to do anything anyway. I think we'll just dispose of it. Well, anyway. We are going to deorbit with extreme prejudice. That's a periapsis that will smack into the surface. If it survived this, I'm going to be mad. Very expensive mission, but we do get paid more than the cost. I think it's trying to load some parallax stuff here. No, we don't need that right now. Going 700 meters per second. And... Okay, it was happy with that. We have done our ranger probe. We have little break with extreme prejudice, and the vessel is destroyed. 
And we've gotten some science. Not a whole lot of science, but we got some science. Back to Space Center. And with that, I'll wrap it up. Uh, we had the loss of a Kerbal. Our first Kerbal loss was Kerman. But uh, at least we ended it on a, <laughs> on a very destructive note. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.